Konnichiwa and welcome to Japan. My name's Aaron Tawama and this is my little postcard. Beautiful people. You of course up with me as I take a two week long rail journey across the southern part of Honshu Island, the biggest island, and Kyushu Island, 16 cities in all on a whirlwind visit. You probably know a little bit about Japan already. Yes, there's lots of people. And the famous Shibuya intersection in Tokyo is a perfect example of just how busy things get. There's about 130 million people in Japan and only 2 million non-Japanese. You'll be pretty lucky to find an islander on your travels, though I did bump into these guys on a mission in Kyoto. Aloha from Kyoto! Hello! Aloha! How are you? <laughs> <laughs> If you can get your head around the train, subway or bus routes, you'll be able to get anywhere. But walking through these stations is a bit of a headspin and you'll get confused at first. The tallest tower in the world is Tokyo's Sky Tree. Along with other standouts like Japan's tallest building, Abeno Harukis in Osaka, or the second tallest, Yokohama's landmark tower, these make for awesome viewing. But every city has modern landmark buildings or structures, each with their own flavor. This along with the old castles or shido can be found everywhere, even in the heart of Tokyo, where you'll find the imperial palace, although its gates are about as close as you can get. On the street you'll find lots of places to shop, from department stores right down to street stores and open malls. And the markets are just crazy busy. There's always events going on like this New Year's Fire Brigade review in Yokohama, where you see both old and new come together. There's lots of activities to do in Japan, from skiing to sightseeing. And every city seems to have Ferris wheel or theme park. Of course, you'll also find our fave thing, food, food, food. Japan is both that super futuristic place that makes robots, cars and gadgets and has a strong traditional culture. But on my travels I wanted to find a slice of the Japan we don't see that often, its religious side. New Year's is a special time in Japan when families pilgrimage to Shinto and Buddhist shrines and temples around the country. Shinto is Japan's original animist religion and it's here that I saw parallels with pre-European Polynesian spiritual beliefs. A reverence of nature, belief in the spirits of mountains and things, and revering ancestors. We saw a lot of Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples on our journey, and many of them share practices and space. But a couple of well-known ones are Kiyomizu Dera in Kyoto, and Tokyo's Asakusa Sensoji Buddhist Temple, 
which is one of the most visited sacred sites in the world. But I wanted to visit somewhere out of the city. Japan, although a huge industrial power, is still 70% forest. And many of the old shrines and temples are in these areas on sacred mountains. For me, this was like Polynesian belief in sacred mountains, and seeing the deities and statues to family gods on pathways up Mount Shosha, on the way to Enyoji, an old Buddhist center, reminded me of Polynesian belief in Atua of old. This, by the way, is where they filmed The Last Samurai. Although sacred places range from the magnificent like Tinkakuji in Kyoto, or just plain stone markers, looking at certain architecture and mostly its Shinto in design, I'm reminded of similar Polynesian architecture in Māori Marae. Like gateways before Marae, Shinto shrines are also guarded by Tori. These demark the space between Tapu and Noa, the sacred and the mundane. And the most famous gateway in Japan is that of the Tori of Itsukushima on Miyajima Island, making the whole island sacred ground. <laughs> I also went to see an even older archaeological site. Yoshinogari Historical Park in Kyushu is a reconstruction of a Yayoi period village, actually built on top of the real village from about 2000 years ago, where they say the architecture was influenced by South Seas Islanders, the original Japanese. Looking back at this old-style village, I'm again reminded of Polynesian architecture and the lashings and structure of the buildings, especially when I saw this meeting house which reminded me very much of a Samoan Malta. Japan itself is very islandy, and especially in the south you'll feel that it's very much in the Pacific. You'll find active volcanic mountains looming over cities palm trees, beaches, fishing, and surfing. If you add in the food, it's not hard to imagine the connection of this place with the rest of the Pacific. I'm standing here across from the A-Dome, which is the memorial left over from the um, dropping of the bomb in Hiroshima in 1945. And uh, it's quite a sober atmosphere, quiet and um, when you think about the number of people that, that died here, uh, it's really quite sad. Around 70,000 people died instantly when the bomb was dropped at 8.15 on the morning of August 6th, 1945. By the end of that year, a further 70,000 died from bomb-related injuries. This is like wiping the entire populations of Tonga and Cook Islands off the map. Today Hiroshima has bounced back and like the rest of Japan is moving forward, taking a slice of both the old and new Nippon. For Pacific Islanders coming to this place, you'll find a world that is somewhat familiar and yet filled with the wonders of yummy food cheap goods, malls, and an array of cultural experiences. Some quick tips. Watch the escalators. Depending on the city, you either stand on the left or the right. You pay for trams and buses at the end of the ride, and there's only one set fare. You might also like to get yourself a Japan Rail Pass in order to travel cheaply on Japan Rail trains. Last thing, Learn the word sumimasen. This means, excuse me, thank you, you're welcome, or even, I'm sorry. Just like the Polynesian word, to low.
Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little postcard and see you in Japan soon.